when you move services around, um, you, you set yourself with a bit of a problem because I really like to set myself what I'm preaching about. The hardest thing about preaching is if somebody doesn't tell you what to preach, it's really, really hard to decide what you're going to preach on. <laughs> really, really hard. Um, so we're going to take a break um, from John, um, John's Gospel. And, and, I, and I've kind of regressed, I've regressed this week. This sounds ridiculous, but, it, but it, this is very early on. I think this may be one of, or similar to one of the first preaches I ever preached ever preached and, and and it was from a very very early reading of the bible so so you, you become a new christian don't you or, or a newish christian and you devour scripture often well i did anyway because i'm bored well not boring but i used to like history books and i used to read and read and read and i devoured the bible and the thing that struck me most um, about the bible is the amount of faith that's involved in it, in those stories. So we're going to have a journey through the Bible. Um, but but would you put the first slide up for me? Um, who has been to Blackburn Museum? Many many years. So those that live in Blackburn, um, Blackburn is fantastic. I remember as when I was much younger, where the kids were much younger, I used to spend hours and hours and hours in Blackburn Cathedral, Blackburn Museum. What's the favourite? What's your favourite part of the museum? It's not the bugs. I love the bugs. Are the bugs still there? Have you never been to Blackburn? Oh, yeah. You've never been to Blackburn, Blackburn Museum. Well, there's some fantastic bugs and there's some mummies and there's some all sorts of weird and wonderful things. But there is a wonderful art gallery uh, there. And one of the rooms is full of wonderful, wonderful paintings. Uh, and I had to sit and wait for the kids to do some colouring in many, many years ago. Um, and my favourite picture in Blackburn Museum is this one. And this one is called... Diana and Christ. And what it is, it's a scene from ancient Rome, um, obviously in the very, very early days of the church. And if you can see the top side, there's like a, there's like a, an idol there, it's all boobs, and it's lots and lots of breasts. And that idol was called Artemis, uh, or the Roman name for it was, was uh, I, can see, I can see Angela squinted. <laughs> there is, there's, it's at the top corner, can you see it? And she had to, um, she's being told, this young girl at the side, being told to sacrifice to this idol, uh, even though she's a Christian. Even though she's a Christian. And can you see next to her a boyfriend? Yeah, a boyfriend. Well, a boyfriend's begging her just to throw a few things to this idol, just a few little whatever to this idol on threat of death. He's trying to say, what are you doing? What are you playing out? But do you think... The woman, the young woman there, she's surrounded by all, all sorts of other people, um, you know, slaves, rich people, you know, people who may know her, um, but do you think she's going to give offer to offerings to the idol? No, she doesn't. No, the point is she doesn't. Yeah. Why would she do that? Why would somebody, all she needs to do is throw a few flakes into like this offering bowl which you can see at the bottom, even a boyfriend's in her ear, pecking her head, saying, don't do it, just throw a few things. Why would she do it? Why would some right-minded person refuse to do something really, really, really simple? Well, she trusts God. She trusts God. She, her loyalty and her trust is in God. She's made... Her choice, uh, and she knows where her hope lies. She knows who she trusts. She could choose an easy life, an easy life with no problems, no difficulty. It'd be easy just to sacrifice, um, just to this idol, this thing. Yeah, but she puts her faith and her trust in Christ. So my questions these mo this morning, uh, and it's a question to me, just as much as it is to you guys, yeah, is what choices do we make? How much can we or do we trust God? What can we trust him for? 
And what happens based on scripture when we don't trust him? <laughs> and what happens when we do trust him? Yeah, and it's the whole story of scripture almost about a people doing one of these things. Yeah? Well, where does it all, it all starts with trust? You can set that off now. It's a picture. Where does the Bible start? Which couple does it start with? Adam and Eve, yeah? And it's a whole situation of trust. Of trust. And, and God puts Adam and Eve in the garden and he explains that they can eat as much of anything. You know the story, much of anything as they want. As much as anything that they want in the garden, apart from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, what a deal. What a fantastic deal. Yeah? Uh, I imagine eternal life with God, close companionship, walking around the garden, no shame, no nothing, all the good things in the land. That's all they've got to do is trust God. That's all they've got to do is trust God. But Satan, if you've been doing freedom in Christ, Satan steps in. He steps in. Now Satan hates you. He hates you. He hated Adam and Eve. And he wants to kill you. Um, and he's a liar. And he's gonna, he does three lies. He said, did God really say you must not eat from any fruit of the garden? Did God really say that? Did God really say that? That's his first tactic. Second, he said, you won't die. There's no consequences from doing what God wants. You won't <coughs> die. There's no consequences for disobeying God. And then he makes them a promise. He says, God, well, he says, God doesn't want you to eat that apple because he knows that your eyes will be open as you eat it and you will be like gods, knowing good from evil. We're not gods. But that was a temptation. Yeah? Do you know what? Satan makes out that God doesn't have your best interest at heart. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think your loving father has your best interest at heart? He really, 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 really does. He really, and when he tells you something, yeah, he's got your best interest at heart. God is trustworthy. He's trustworthy. Do you know what we were doing in the freedom in Christ? At that point, Adam and Eve could have told Satan to get lost. They could have told Satan to do one. Yeah, but they don't. Yeah? They, they trust Satan over God. And do you know what? The apple looked really, really good. It looked good. It looked like the better plan. But it wasn't. I've got a question. What do you trust God? Do you trust God? Yeah? Do you trust what he says is true? Do you trust he means what he says? Do you trust that he has your best interest at heart? These are just obvious things, aren't they? Obvious things, but they are true. It's the first, it's the first story, it's the first two or three chapters. It's all about trusting, all about trusting. Do you trust God? Do you know what Adam and Eve didn't? And they did die. That was one of the consequences. They didn't die immediately. They didn't come immediately. Uh, but they did die. And death actually came into the world. That's why we die. And there was a spiritual death. And not trusting God. Do you trust God? Where does it go next? Where, where do well, you, you know the story? Next in scripture, we move to Noah, Genesis chapter six, verse five, and this is the one. This, this is the one of the saddest passages in the Bible. After the fall, sin comes into the world. Relationships get so bad um, that God looks over the world and everything that mankind thought, said, did, imagined was consistently and totally evil. That's terrible, isn't it? That's terrible. And it goes on to say that he was, this is a, like a father with a child. It says he was sorry that he ever made the earth. It broke God's heart. Yeah? 
I, th- I think humans will still break God's heart regularly. So God sees everything. He sees every murder, every war, all violence, everything, every abuse. He, he sees it and it breaks his heart. Yeah, and he's sorry he made the earth and, and judgment was coming. But he found Noah. And what did Noah do? God notified him of the judgment to come and told him to build a big boat. Yeah, not just any old big boat, a big boat in the desert. A big boat in the desert. Now imagine everybody's doing evil things, yeah, or whatever, all your mates. Uh, running around the earth and it's crazy who knows what the earth was like and then in the middle of the desert you're told to build a big boat like like titanic size yeah titanic size boat yeah and you had a choice and god told you to do it would you do it do you know he'd have to devote his life to it he must lose his reputation he'd be laughed at he'd be mocked he'd maybe even potentially be killed because in fairness, when you tell people judgment is coming, they don't, they don't like it. Yeah. His missus must have probably gone mad at him, I imagine, at some point. Yeah. Or would you just get on with the rest of your life with your family day to day? Should he trust God? Should he trust God? In this crazy endeavour. Well, he did. He did trust God. He trusted God. Yeah, and he did everything that God told him. And he built a boat in the middle of nowhere with no water. And that's trusting God. And because of their trust in God, not only he, but his family was saved. All stories, you could be at Sunday school, but it, what's it about? It's all about trust. Do we trust God? And do you know the descendants of Noah are sat here because they trusted God? Isn't that beautiful? Do you trust God over your reputation? Do you trust God over what your friends and family might think? Do you trust God? So much silver, is he? Silver harnesses at the back. Yeah. Why? God loved Noah because. Well, what? Uh, have you read the book Love Languages? Yeah. Five love languages. Have you read that book? It's a great book. Read it. It's all about different people have different love languages. I think God's love language is faith. God loves faith. He loves it. He thinks it's wonderful when people trust him, and Noah trusted him. And then we move to that dude called Abraham. Abraham was living in a place where early the Chaldeans, it was like New York, honestly. It was so sophisticated. Yeah, it was, it had, and he had a large family, um, and, and he was living a normal life in comfort. And God tells him to leave your native country, your fathers, your families, and go to a land I will show you. He doesn't say go here. He says, go to a land I will show you. Yeah. I will show you. He never tells him where to go. Yeah, but Abraham still trusted him. Still trusted him. Go, go from a posh city, go live in a tent. Do you, do you trust him? Would you trust him to do that? I don't know whether I would. Yeah, but he did. Even though we didn't know where he was going. Do you trust God where on your journey? Even sometimes we have to trust God because we don't know where we're going, do we, sometimes? Later, God promises Abraham his wife a son, yeah, in their old age, yeah? And his wife, Sarah, laughs because Abraham's old age, yeah? It was so old, laughs. But do you know what? Abraham trusted God. Trusted God. God, and God loved it so much that that made him righteous. See, Abraham made many mistakes in his life. Many, 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 many mistakes. Yeah, cocked it up so many times. He was not a good example all the time. Yeah, he really wasn't. Yeah, he did some bad, mean things with Abraham. But do you know what? He trusted 
I'm not encouraging you to do bad, evil things. I'm not, do, don't be Abraham. Be this bit of Abraham. Yeah, but he trusted God. Yeah, he trusted God. You know, and that made him right in God's eyes. Yeah? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? It got, it got worse for Abraham, arguably, yeah? So, so God, after he gives him, trust God, God gives him his son, yeah? See, how precious must have Isaac been, yeah? How precious must he have been? Uh, a boy, yeah? An only child, well, a child uh, of the promise. How precious must he have been? And then God tells, says, right, Abraham, take this son, your only son, yes, the one who you love so much, God loved him so much, and sacrifice him as a burnt offering in the land I will show you. I think that's possibly one of the most shocking stories in the Bible. Yeah, shocking. Yeah, shocking. Imagine God said to me, right, Stephen, I want you to take Abby, Amy, and Reuben, and I want them to take you up to a place where you, I'm going to show you and I want you to sacrifice him. That's terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. I would, def- I would say no. But Abraham didn't. Why did Abraham? I think Abraham knew that God had the power to resurrect him uh, from the dead. But he trusted God. Do you know what? He trusted God with his children. Abraham trusted God with his children. That simple question, do we trust God with our children? It's hard as we get either if they're young, if they're older, yeah. Do we trust God with our children? Yeah, sometimes actually following Jesus on the surface or following God can seem like it's bad for the welfare of our children sometimes, yeah? It can be. But actually, we need to pray and we need to trust God with our children. Do you trust God with your children? Do you know, however well you bring your children up, <laughs> they will do their own thing, yeah? But we need to trust God with our children. Do you trust him? Do you trust God with your children? I know as parents that's not easy to do. But we have to. We have to trust God with our children. Next is a dude called Joseph. Yeah? And Joseph gets a vision. And that vision gets him into a load of trouble. A load of trouble. And he gets chucked down a well by his brothers. Into trouble with his family. Have you ever got into trouble with your family? Yeah? Got him into loads of trouble. But Joseph knew that this dream was from God. Have you ever had something that you really truly believe is from God and nobody else believes you? (laughs) But he hung on to it because he got into loads of trouble. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he got into a load of trouble and he ended up being sold as a slave and persecuted. Yeah, persecute. At that point, I would be right, God, I am never talking to you ever again because you've given me this dream and it's got me into a massive amount of trouble. So I would have I been done with God at that point. Done with him. But do you know what? He trusted him. Joseph trusted him. And then Joseph got into the workplace and he honoured God in the workplace. Well, what they, he should have stole, cheated, whatever. So these guys, he's a slave. Yeah, they haven't got his best possible, they haven't got his best interest at heart, is he? I would have done the little minimum that I possibly could. Yeah, I, well, I was. You don't, don't follow, yeah, follow the Bible story characters, yeah? But what did Joseph do? He honoured God in his work. He honoured God in his work. He trusted God in his work, to do the right thing, even though he was a slave to a rich dude in Egypt. And then it gets worse. So he's doing the right thing. You know the story, Potiphar's wife, yeah? He could have just 
slept with her and got away with it and had a right good time, couldn't he? Yeah, nobody needed to know. Nobody needed to know at all. What did he choose to do? He chose to trust God and do the right thing. Trust God and choose the right thing. And where did it end up? Did he end up happy ever after? No, he ended up in jail. Yeah, <laughs> he ended up <laughs> in, in jail. It got worse. Now, at this point, I would be probably hacked off with, your, with God. Properly. I was sat in a jail, yeah? But Joseph trusted God. Whatever the circumstances looked like, he trusted God completely. He lived faith, honouring God. You know, and, and I have known people who followed and trusted God, who have ended up in jail for trusting God, who could have had an easier life, set free a lot quicker than they did. But they trusted God. God, and God honoured it. You know the story, don't you? God honoured it. Well, I ask you this morning, do you trust God whatever the circumstances? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? All these stories you know of, but you just trust him now. Faith, you can trust him. Moses, yeah, Moses was sent to deliver his people, yeah? The Israelites, did you know what? But he, he wanted to be a deliverer in his own timing. So, so he started to try and free the people in his own way, in his own timing, uh, and didn't trust God's timing. That's why he killed the Egyptian, yeah? He didn't trust God's timing. And he tries to bring the people out of deliverance itself to his own strength. You know, it took 40 years in the wilderness for God to sort his head out. Yeah, and realise he had to trust God's timing uh, to get God ready. Do you trust God's time? I, well, I struggle with it. You, I, I struggle with God's timing because it's annoying. Yeah, but I trust it. I trust that God's timing is perfect. And he did, in his own time, God sorted it out and the people of Israel were free. And then God does signs and wonders yeah, to set the people free. Yeah, and it's all for God's glory. Do you know it's the same God? It's just sometimes we think it's a different God yeah, in the Bible to what it is today. But you know what? God is the same. So God still does miracles. God could still part the sea if he wanted to. Do you trust God for miracles? God can heal. He's, he's a massive, supernatural, almighty God of the universe. He can do whatever he wants, and he happens to love you and be good. Do you trust God for miracle in your situation to set you free? God is a God of signs and wonders. That he, that he sees that, and God provides food for them, and milk, and honey, uh, and they trust God, and uh, anyway... But what do the Israelites do? Do they continue trusting God? No. <laughs> There's many books in the Bible, yeah? No, they don't. Yeah, and they end up in the wilderness for 40 years because they don't trust God and trust God in his timing. That's what happens when you don't trust God. They were worried because they were giants in the land because things are difficult. Yeah, and hard work. Yeah, but they didn't trust God. And do you trust God to honour the promises that he has made with you? Has God made you promises? He will honour them. Do you trust him? God makes a covenant with his people. But you know what? God tells them to leave their farmland fallow every seventh year. Yeah, so every year they have to do nothing. Yeah, in the, when these guys are farmers, yeah, and they have to stop work and leave one year fallow. Yeah, to do that, you have to trust God. You have to trust God. And 
And they asked God, so what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? And God said, I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for, uh, for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop and will continue to eat until the harvest of the ninth year comes. You know what? God sorted it out. Yeah, God provided. Yeah, they had to trust God and not farm during that three years. And God provided them more and more for th provision for three years. Do you trust God with your income, with your provision? Do you trust him? Put that to a lot of you there with your income, put that to a test many, many times. It's the only test actually you're allowed to make God. Go test me, says the Lord, and I will. Yeah? In a book called Malachi. Do you trust God? Do you honour God with your finances? Joshua trusts God. Yeah? The song goes... Joshua won the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Yeah, he didn't. God won the battle of Jericho. Yeah, God won the battle of Jericho. It's inaccurate. He trusted God, trusted God. You can actually imagine the, 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 the generals meeting, couldn't you? Well, what we're going to do, lads? We're not going to do anything. We're going to just march around here like eight times and then the walls are going to fall down. Aren't you? They would have sacked him, probably went sacking on the spot. Yeah? Like, what are you talking about, you moron? Why don't we just wander around and blow some horns? They're massive. These walls are massive. You can, you can imagine it, can't you? <laughs> I love the human element of the Bible. Yeah. Do you know what? Is, is there something in your life that just seems that is such a bad, difficult wall that it can never come down? Ever come down? You know, it might be anger, it might be addiction, it might be depression, it might be dependency, it, it, there's, there's strongholds in your life, yeah, something, a pattern of sin, we're talking about it on freedom in Christ, is there a pattern of sin that goes on in your life, stopping you from living a victorious life as a child of God, do you know what, God has the power to destroy those strongholds, he has the power to destroy those strongholds. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Sent Gideon out, a nobody, least of his tribe. Yeah, and he gets a big army, and God reduces his army. Reduces his army. Why? Because God needed the glory and his victory. You know, his vic yeah, it, God was victorious with limited resources. So often we have limited resources, don't we, in life? Yeah, we think, well, we'll, we'll step out when God provides the resources first. But actually, often God, I think, strips the resource <laughs> first and then helps you step out later. Yeah? Why? Because he wants the glory. Yeah, he didn't want the resources to get the glory. He wants the glory. He wants the glory. It's a remarkable story, Gideon. Do you think you're nothing? Do you think you're the least? Yeah, Gideon was the least. Gideon wasn't remarkable, but he had a remarkable God. A remarkable God. What happens when you don't trust God? Well, Saul, have you ever read the story of Saul? He wanted the adulation of people over the adulation of God. He didn't trust God. And it goes horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. Yeah? Do you trust God or people loving you? There's so many stories. Yeah? Prophets. Yeah, we're not going to go through all the prophets. Yeah, but they just basically wanted God's people to come back to God. Come back to him and trust him. That's all they wanted to. Yeah? Come back to him and trust him. You know, and they were talking to a to a society, not that much different to our society often. Rich get richer, the poor get poorer, politicians get more and more corrupt, everything's more, there's more injustice, there's less mor morality, yeah, people obsessed with entertaining themselves and wealth and whatever, and, and Hosea and Amos and Isaiah and Jeremiah tell the people to turn back to God. 
to trust him. Trust God. Justice is coming. Justice is coming. Do you trust God to be bring justice to your situation? You might not see it now, but he will bring just, there will be a time where God brings justice to your situation. Do you trust God's justice? Do you trust God's justice? It's a weird one, that, isn't it? But do you trust him? Do call Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Just trust God. When he had the opportunity to eat whatever he wants, if he says no and lose his life, I'm going to honour God in my situation. Yeah, I love his mates as well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they get threatened to be thrown into a fire. I love this part of the Bible, the comedy of it. Threatened to throw into, a, into the fire that is like a million times hotter than it should be. Yeah, and, and basically you've got Nebuchadnezzar, who's, who is the most powerful king in the ancient world. Um, and they say, unless you worship me, I'm going to chuck you in the fire. Yeah. And the <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego basically say, even if we burn in the fire, we don't care. Do one king. Yeah, that's what they say. That's basically what they say. Yeah, I'm going to trust God. Do one king. If it was the Lancashire version. Yeah. But do you trust? Have enough to trust in God so much, so much. Yeah. You know, there's this story after story, a guy called Haggai, a prophet called Haggai, and the people do come back into the land after 70 years, and they start building a temple, yeah, which has been resourced by a king, by the king of Babylon, and then God removes, well, the, the king removes their resources, uh, and there's no resources to continue being in, building the temple. Yeah, so they stop. They stop because the foundations are in, but the resources stop. And it goes on for many years. And ha God tells them to start again. This is a Haggai. Yeah, and they start building this temple again. And do you know what happens when they start building the temple again? It's a weird story. But the <laughs> basically, the Babylon, a different king, the Babylon king, turns on the resources again. Because God says, all the resources are mine, the cattle are mine, the gold and the silver are mine. I will shake the heavens and pour them onto earth. Yeah. So they build a temple, paid for by some foreign king. That only happens when they move out in faith, when the people trusted God. It's great. I love that story. It's a great story. Do you trust him? Do you trust God to step out first and then see what happens? Yeah. Ultimately, do you know what God sent Jesus? Yeah, you, you know God sent Jesus. Yeah, and told us to trust Him because He's God. And Jesus said many, 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 many things. Yeah, but things such as this. Jesus told him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Do you trust Him? Do you trust him? Do you trust Jesus? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Simple and obvious questions. I struggle with this. Because do you trust him? Do you trust him? He says, come to me all the weary and heavy burden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and I will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden is i give you is light you know what jesus is gentle and humble of heart which means god is gentle and humble of heart yeah and sometimes we want to turn to other things to make our burden light don't we but do you trust god's word do you trust the words of jesus do you trust him do you trust him do you trust him? God sent us the Holy Spirit. Yeah, as God's guarantee that we can trust him. Probably the most obvious preach I've ever written, ever given for a long time. Because it's obvious, it's obvious stuff. It's obvious. 
May our God just help us to trust him and honour him and love him. You know, part of love is trust as well. Yeah? God wants us to trust him. Whatever area of your life God is asking you to trust him, trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Father God, we thank you that you are a trustworthy and faithful God. That we can trust you. That we can trust you in every area of our life. That you are trustworthy. That we can trust your word. We can trust your deeds. We thank you for the many examples in the Bible of faithful people, great men and women of faith who trusted you. Father, we just thank you that we are unremarkable, but we have a remarkable God who is totally trustworthy. Father, we thank you so much that we can trust you. Father, send your spirit. Send your spirit more and more. Help us to be like these men and, and women in your word who trusted you. Fill us with your spirit. Help us trust you. Trust you more.